Recently, we went over the best weapon from every Mega Man X game, so now it's finally time for the video you guys have been waiting for over an entire year for. The worst weapon from every Mega Man X game, X through X8. Surely this won't be controversial, right guys? Right? Mega Man X1, the first Mega Man X game ever made, has a very good selection of weapons, so it's going to be hard to find the worst. Let's just get things started though with Chill Penguin's weapon. I like this weapon a lot, it's very strong, you have the ability to ricochet it off of walls, and by charging it up you're able to make a rideable platform which the game wants you to use to get certain upgrades. Now as we all know, Tudor P subscribers are pro gamers, they've probably heard of the Iceless Strat to get the heart tanking Boomer Kawanger stage, but we can't expect the average Mega Man X player to be able to do that, right? I mean, I guess we could, but that's not very nice. But that aside, this weapon is still really good just for killing enemies. It also stops Spark Mandrel right in his tracks, but like I said in the best weapons video, we're not going to be considering boss weaknesses in this video because that would make this video kind of pointless. I mean, every weapon is a weakness to some boss, so I mean, it's pointless to talk about that. But anyway, I think it's safe to say Shotgun Ice is not the worst weapon from this game, right guys? We can at least agree on this, right? Because I had several comments mad at me in the best weapons video, even in the Mega Man X entry, which I think is ridiculous. For example, I said the best weapon was actually Sting Chameleon's laser weapon. Not because of the base shot that shoots lasers, this is fine, but obviously that does not make it the best weapon. What makes it the best weapon is that when you charge it up, you become both rainbow and invincible. Now making Mega Man X rainbow is already super cool because I for one am a big fan of pretty colors, but making him invincible is genuinely overpowered, especially in certain parts of the game. I think this weapon is obviously the best, but some people apparently had a problem with that. I guess they're just bad at Mega Man or something, I don't know. Joking aside, this weapon is definitely the best as I've already said in my last video, so it cannot be the worst. Or did I say that in my last video? You never know with me, I could be lying. You better go watch that video. Okay, okay, I did say that in the last video, I don't think I'm fooling anyone this time. Storm Eagle's Horizontal Tornado is also an amazing weapon. It's super powerful, it's easy to use, and just wipes out the majority of enemies. It's even great against the mini bosses in this game, so I could see an argument being made for this actually being the best weapon from this game. Now I wouldn't call this weapon the best from this game, maybe the second or the third best, but either way it is far from the worst weapon. Boomer Kawanger on the other hand has a weapon that is straight up fun. It's not super powerful, but it's also not weak, so it's in a tricky spot. But it's fun to use. You're able to pick up power ups with it, which is super satisfying. You're even able to just spam this weapon without shooting any enemies because it's a boomerang and it actually replenishes your weapon ammo if you don't hit an enemy by the time it comes back to you, which is super cool. Its charged up variant isn't anything special though, I mean obviously it's more powerful than the base boomerangs, but I'm not trying to argue that this weapon is powerful, I just think it's very fun and useful, which is enough for me to not call it the worst weapon for Mega Man X. Also in the last video, I don't think I gave Armored Armadillo's weapon enough credit. I said it wasn't great compared to the best weapon in the game because Sting Chameleon's weapon makes you literally invincible while Armored Armadillo's weapon just shields you from enemies. And while that is true, I wasn't trying to say this weapon is bad, despite it being a shield weapon, I actually like it a lot and think it is very useful. Well, okay, at least it's charged up shield ability is useful. Shooting those blue balls is pretty bad. Not the worst base shot a weapon from this game has, but it's certainly not good. The charge shot induced shield on the other hand is very useful. It's true that if you run into an enemy that has too much HP, your shield just breaks, but you can very easily farm the weaker enemies forever without your shield breaking or even losing any weapon energy. This is useful in armor and armadillo stage of course with that one extra life bat but you can even use this in the last stage of the game if you die to sigma and need to refill your sub tanks sure you could just use your buster to do the same thing but this just makes it easier because you can have this shield up while wall jumping and just wait i mean it's still not fun it's, i've never been a fan of farming outside of stardew valley but this weapon is undeniably useful making it not the worst now next up we have a clear bottom three for the weapons being spark mantle's weapon launch octopus's weapon and flame mammoth's weapon Weapon. Now I will go ahead and say, I think Spark Mandrel's weapon is the best of these three, so it will not be the worst, even though it is clearly in the bottom three weapons from my experience. I mean, this weapon just isn't that great, it looks very cool in its electrical weapon, so I mean it makes sense, but it's just straight up weak against most enemies. It can travel up walls, which is cool, and the charge shot is a lot more powerful than the original shots, but if that charge shot wasn't there, this weapon would be a whole lot worse. It's still not great, but I don't think it's the worst weapon. The worst weapon is definitely B 
between the flamethrower and the missile. Now, there is a case to be made for both of these weapons actually being alright, because it turns out none of the weapons in this game are utter garbage, but these two feel significantly worse than the rest. Let's start by talking about Launch Octopus's missile, because how could that be worse than the short-ranged flamethrower, right? Well, it's, uh, very weak. Yeah, that's about it. It's a cool weapon, it locks on the enemy, so that's nice, I guess, but it does a very small amount of damage, and even the charge shot for this weapon is not as strong as most weapons charge shots. It's not a bad weapon in theory, but in practice, it just doesn't do enough damage to justify using it over anything else, except for maybe the flamethrower. This is a short-ranged, uh, flamethrower. You know what a flamethrower is, right, guys? TZQ, explain to the folks at home what a flamethrower is. Exactly. Thank you, TizzyQ. Man, that guy is very smart. You should go follow him on Twitch and subscribe to his YouTube channel. And mine too while you're at it. But anyway, like I was saying, this weapon is not as bad as you might think because you can walk up to these stronger enemies and just hold down the shoot button killing them. And it actually does a good amount of damage. Plus, the charge shots can be useful in a few circumstances like killing the digger thing in Armored Armadillo stage, but it's nothing super spectacular. The main problems with this weapon are that it's kind of hard to use and it's very situational. On top of that, if you have the upgraded buster, you're always charging up a shot while shooting the regular flamethrower, which can be annoying. But is it annoying enough to make this weapon worse than those weak missiles? Or are those weak missiles better than the flamethrower? Well, this is a close one, guys. I do think these are the two worst weapons, but for choosing the absolute worst one, it's going to be difficult. On one hand, the missiles are easy to use, but don't do a lot of damage, so you could theoretically just spam these and probably be okay. But on the other hand, we have a short-ranged flamethrower that does more damage, but is really only useful in certain situations. Well guys, I do eventually have to make a decision here, so here we go. The worst weapon from this game is the missiles. I know, I know, this is probably shocking because the flamethrower seems like the obvious choice here, but at least that has a few uses, even though it is situational. The missiles just don't. I mean, you can have fun with it, I guess, just like any other weapon, but other than for the boss weaknesses, there is no point in this game where the missiles are the best weapon to use in a situation. So I'm sorry, Launch Octopus's missiles but you are officially the worst weapon from Mega Man X. Mega Man X2 does have worse weapons than Mega Man X1 for the most part, but that doesn't really make it easier to pick the absolute worst from this game, unfortunately. But I guess we better stop complaining here and get started. I'm gonna start with Bubble Crab's weapon because this one is surprisingly good. The base shot does a lot more damage than you would expect from a bubble weapon, but that's not why this weapon is so good. The reason it's so good is because its charge shot is an almost infinitely self-replenishing shield that wipes out almost every enemy in the game. The reason I call it almost infinitely self-replenishing is because it barely drains any of your weapon energy, so if you're getting kills with this weapon, you should get enough weapon drops to keep the shield up for as long as you want it to be. It's better than Armored Armadillo's charged shield weapon because of how effective it is against stronger enemies with a lot of HP, but it's worse in the sense that it's not literally infinite. But we aren't comparing those weapons. We can rank all the weapons another day if you guys really want to see that, but for now, I think it's clear that this is not the worst weapon from this game. Wheel Gator's weapon is one I criticized a good bit in my best weapons video, but not because it's an awful weapon. I just think it's kind of slow, especially in its base form while getting those secrets. You can use its charged up shot to shoot lasers and get into those secret areas a lot faster, which is very fun, but its charge shot isn't all that strong. The base weapon isn't all that strong either, but it can hit multiple times, so it's almost like a DPS weapon. And while I did criticize it in the best weapons video, I did clarify that I still do enjoy this weapon a good bit, and I think it's really fun to use. Just because a weapon isn't the best weapon from the game does not mean it's bad, and this is a good example of that because I like this weapon a lot. It's one of my favorites, it's just not the strongest, but regardless, I think we all know this is not the worst. Wire Sponge's weapon, on the other hand, is one I praised a good bit in the video despite it not being the best weapon against enemies. But like I said in that video, it's useful for other reasons related to speedrunning. For example, obviously it could speed you up if you grab a wall in front of you, but my favorite use for this weapon is getting the upgrade capsule and wheel gator stage early. A lot of people say this is a hard trick, but I've been doing this since I was a kid, so I really don't think it's it's that hard to do at all. It can be tricky, I guess, but with a little practice, you too can get this upgrade capsule without the upgraded dash boots. I believe in you. So again, as a weapon against enemies, it's far from the best. But if we look at it objectively, it's far from the worst, so uh, that means it's not the worst. Flame Stag's weapon is one that's just great as a straight up weapon. It's a way better fire weapon than Flame Mammoth's short range flamethrower because it just shoots big old balls of fire that do a good bit of damage. It's not the best weapon in base form, but it's still very decent and 
far from the worst. But even if its base form was literally terrible, which it isn't, its charge shot gives you an extra dash in the air which is super useful for obvious movement reasons. I mean it's fast, it allows you to get the Shoryuken, what more could you ask for in a weapon? This is almost like if Wire Sponge's weapon was actually good against enemies so this obviously cannot be the worst weapon. Morph Moth's weapon is literally garbage because it collects whatever junk is around you and uses that as a weapon. But is it a bad weapon? No, not at all. It's certainly not the best but it does decent damage and its charge shot is super fun to use because you get a big old ball of junk to shoot at your enemies which is always fun. Also, I like the fact that it's always different depending on what stage you're on. Most of the time it's a form of junk but in Wire Sponge's stage for example, it's grass. I think it is weaker as grass but you know what, this is too cool for me to be upset about so it's not going to be the worst weapon. Overdrive Ostrich has a very interesting weapon. It shoots these blue boomerang like things that bounce all over the walls and stuff and I mean, it's not terrible but it's very weak. Despite that, it's a very fun weapon to use all around and I do enjoy using it in my games but when it comes to being objective, it's just not a strong weapon. Its charge shot is stronger technically but it doesn't always hit the enemy you want it to since it just comes from the ground making it far from the best weapon. But even though it is a little weird, it is still fun to use and like I said, even if it wasn't, it wouldn't be the worst weapon from this game. Crystal Snail is a maverick that I hate from the bottom of my heart but once again I've gotta say his weapon is not the worst. Sure, it's not great, I mean I don't really like his weapon but it does have its uses. For example, if you shoot an enemy it turns into a uh, crystallized block that you can then jump on and use as a platform. But that's about the extent of what this weapon can do. Oh, also if you do dash through the crystallized enemy it will also drop something which is nice. Like it always drops something, it's a guaranteed drop so that's cool. It does have a charge shot but all that does is lag your game which sucks. I don't like that, do you guys like that? I definitely do not like my game lagging so this is a horrible charge shot. Definitely one of the worst charge shots of all time. But after hearing that you're probably thinking hey how is this not the worst weapon then? Well that would be because of Magnet Mine for Magna Centipede. This weapon isn't absolute garbage but unlike every other weapon we've taken a look at it doesn't really have any great uses. It's a very slow moving bomb that does less damage than some of the fast moving other weapons which obviously is not great. It can be fun to use but that's not the same thing as being good. For example you can have fun using this weapon for trick shots but you could also have fun picking up a turd out of the toilet and using that for some kind of trick shot. Well I wouldn't have fun doing that but maybe one of you guys watching would you freaks. Anyway, you get my point. The charge shot of this weapon also isn't much better. It can kill some weaker enemies, but most of the time it's just a slow moving black hole looking object. I'm not going to call it a black hole because it doesn't act like one. It just looks like a black hole. Anyway, this should be good, but it isn't. So uh, yeah, I'm sorry Magnet Mine, but you are definitely the worst weapon from Mega Man X2. Mega Man X3 is one of my favorite, if not my number one favorite Mega Man X game, which a lot of people cyberbully me on the internet for, but you know what? That's okay. Wait, not cyberbullying. Don't do that. Obviously, that's not what I meant. Anyway, let's get started with Blizzard Buffalo's weapon. First of all, this weapon is great for many reasons. It's super strong, killing most of the enemies in one or two hits. If you miss and hit a wall, it breaks and turns into a spike that hits the ground or an enemy near it. I mean, I already called this weapon the best, but I did forget to mention that every time you kill an enemy with this weapon, it always drops health which is incredibly useful in something I actually didn't know so thank you comment section. I never thought I would say that it's like unironically but thank you guys. You guys deserve credit on this one. I didn't know about that. Now the charge shot for Blizzard Buffalo's weapon is not great. It just freezes your buster basically. I assume this does decent damage but I never use it and you shouldn't either if we're being honest so whatever. But anyway this obviously is not the worst weapon. Toxic Seahorse's acid is also extremely powerful against enemies and once again if you miss it it bounces into a bunch of drops that also do a ton of damage so this weapon is amazing. Once again there was something about this weapon that I had no idea about. Just like with Blizzard Buffalo's weapon every time you kill an enemy with it you get a guaranteed drop except with this weapon you get a weapon drop. Or maybe I'm getting it mixed up and Blizzard Buffalo's gets the weapon drop but whatever. Either way I didn't know about either one of these effects and I think that automatically excludes either one of these weapons from being the worst. And once again thank you comment section. I know this is very out of character for me but seriously this is actually really cool to know about and I had no idea about this, so yeah, thanks guys. Also, before I forget, I like the charge shot for the acid weapon too. It's not the best charge shot ever, but you get two balls that you can follow around and uh, that's fun, right? Either way, it's safe to say this is not the worst weapon from this game. Another weapon that obviously cannot be the worst is Triad Thunder from Volt Catfish. This weapon spawns a giant triangle around you which decimates the majority of enemies and just lets you dash around wherever you want to with ease. It's super powerful, easy to use, and almost won the best weapon 
weapon award. I'd go as far as to say it is the easiest weapon to use, so if you've never played Mega Man X3 or you're playing it for the first time, you would probably get the most help from this weapon, so definitely try it out. Its charge shot isn't super impressive damage wise, but it does let you access certain areas, which is nice I guess. Either way, this obviously cannot be the worst weapon from this game. Next up, we have a weapon that I've always kind of slept on when it comes to this game being Blast Hornet's weapon. This weapon is just cool, it basically takes an enemy robot and uses the actual enemy as a weapon against other enemies. I don't know if this weapon uses hacking or the force or something, but either way, this weapon is awesome and more powerful than I thought it would be. It's not good enough to be the best weapon in the game, but it is super fun and honestly just an underrated weapon in general. The charge shots also lets you shoot out hornets and yes, for the record, I know they're not bees, I just think it's funny to troll you guys by saying stuff like, Blast Hornet shoots bees, which my subscribers all know and they're all used to this trolling, but if this is your first time watching a video, this is your one and only warning for the new people. I am a pretty big troll, I think it's funny if I ever say something wrong, it's probably a troll, I would never say something wrong ever. But anyway, this charge shot is cool too, I wouldn't say it's as cool as the base shot for this weapon, but overall, I love this weapon and I think you guys should give it a try in your own playthroughs. And uh, oh yeah, it's not the worst. Crush Crawfish's spinning blades are one of my favorite weapons to use, but they aren't as powerful as they should be. Like these things are big and bulky and have blades, but they're still weaker than a lot of the other weapons. That's not to say they're bad, I mean I literally just said they're one of my favorites. I love using these things, but they're just far from the most useful weapon in this game. The charge shot is also kinda weird, giving you a giant and dangerous bladed yo-yo that you can move around, which is much more effective against enemies, but it is a little bit less fun to use than the regular weapon. I know I'm probably weird for saying that, but I enjoy using the base form of this weapon a lot for trick shots and honestly just in general, so I am not calling it the worst. Tunnel Rhino has a pretty medium weapon, I don't know if I'll ever do a video on the most medium weapons, but if that day ever comes, keep an eye out for this one because, well, it's not bad at all, but it's also not spectacular, hence why I called it medium. It's just drills, I mean, they do drill things. They definitely are not bad, but they are not the best weapon either. The charge shot for this weapon gives you a full-on drill hand, which may look cool, but I don't really think it's super useful, so I never use this charge shot, even though I do like Gurren Lagan. Like this video if you also like Gurren Lagan. The anime. You guys know Gurren Lagan, right? Either way, this obviously is not the worst weapon from this game. Neon Tiger's weapon, on the other hand, is surprisingly close. It just looks a lot more powerful than it actually is. It turns your buster into a machine gun, but it doesn't do a lot of damage. It does have a nice spread, I guess, so again, it's definitely not the worst weapon, but if there was a patch release for this game one day, they should buff this weapon and give it more damage. Plus, the charge shot for this weapon is just a joke. It makes a disco ball that misses a lot of randomly placed shots. Plus, if this disco ball gets shot at any point, it just explodes and gets destroyed, meaning you cannot use this if you're surrounded by enemies, which really stinks because that's the only scenario that this would ever be useful in in the first place. So this weapon had a lot of potential, but it just doesn't deliver. Despite that, it's still not the worst weapon from this game. That honor would have to go to Gravity Well from Gravity Beetle. Now at first glance, if you use this weapon against weaker enemies, it looks like it's pretty good. I mean, it's cool and everything, and its charge shot certainly looks very powerful too, so how could this be the worst weapon? Well, well, here's the thing, on enemies that are not weak, it doesn't do anything at all. Like literally, it just does nothing. Look at this. This is a gravity based weapon and it isn't doing anything against an enemy whose entire purpose is to screw itself down and shut, blocking your path. Even the charged gravity shot that presumably makes gravity go up will not lift this enemy and give you a path to go through, which is frankly stupid. It's not just with this enemy either, it's with most enemies that are not complete pushovers. Meaning this weapon is really only useful against Blast Hornet and I've already said I'm not going to be counting boss weaknesses, so yeah. Sorry Gravity Well, but really I'm not sorry. You're just the worst weapon by far from Mega Man X3. Mega Man X4 is the first Mega Man X game to make its way to the PlayStation 1 because I do not acknowledge the existence of the Mega Man X3 port, and you shouldn't either. And in the best weapons video, I gave its weapons a bad rap, especially for Mega Man X, but that's mostly because I have a clear favorite and I was trying to emphasize that since it was a video on the best weapons. But I will try to give them some more credit in this video because something I didn't mention was the fact that this is the first game to let you use your regular buster at the same time as a weapon, which does change things quite a bit. For example, 
example, with Magma Dragoon's weapon, it only shoots directly above you. If this was any game before this one, it would be almost useless because it limits where you're able to shoot more than it helps you. But since this is Mega Man X4, you're able to use your regular buster while using this weapon to shoot any enemies that may be above you. So while this weapon obviously still is not the best, it's not the worst either, and I don't want to mislead you guys and make you think this weapon is completely useless. Though I will say, the charge shot of this weapon being the Shoryuken while cool isn't very useful as it should be, but maybe that's my Mega Man X2 bias talking. Or maybe it's because I really hate Dragon Ball Fighter Z, which is where the Shoryuken originated from, but who knows. It's not my fault I'm more of a Naruto fan. Anyway, Magma Dragoon's weapon is not my favorite, but it's definitely not the worst. Jet Stingrays is another weapon I dogged on because it only shoots down, and again, if you take into account being able to use your regular buster, it's actually not that bad. Now, does that make this the best weapon? No, obviously not, but it's at least not as bad as I made it out to be in the last video, so I apologize for that. It's still not the best thing ever, it doesn't do a ton of damage, but it can be useful. And its charge shot is a pretty powerful laser, which is cool, so even though it's not the best, it's also far from being the worst. To win Slasher, on the other hand, is one I gave ample credit to. I mean, this is just a good weapon all around. It's cool, it's fun to use, it does decent damage, and the charge shot just is a straight up better version of this weapon, which is really all I can ask for in a charge shot. I don't know why some of these weapons do weird things with their charge shots, but just make it a better version of the original weapon. That's all we really want. Anyway, this obviously cannot be the worst weapon either. Split Mushroom Shadow Clone weapon is my favorite from this game, and I think it is the best. I know a lot of people disagree, but I mean, come on, this is obviously a great weapon at the very least. It's super useful to just spam the hitbox on the base attack with, and the charge attack is just cool. And if you disagree, go make your own worst weapons video. I won't stop you. In fact, I'll happily watch your video and even leave a like on it, and who knows, maybe I'll subscribe if you remind me five times per video. Web Spider's weapon is not great for attacking enemies, but like I said in the best weapons video, you are able to wall jump off of it, which not only lets you get upgrades, but more importantly, it lets you cheese a lot of things in this game. And while I don't like cheese in real life that much due to it hurting my tummy, I do like cheesing things in video games. I think that's pretty fun. The charge shot isn't the greatest thing ever, but with the base shot being so useful, this obviously will not be the worst weapon from this game. For us, Walrus's weapon is getting pretty close though, because it spawns a giant iceberg around X, and you really have to be close to your enemies to actually hit them with this. That's not to say it's completely useless, because if you're really good at the game, you can obviously hit enemies without hurting yourself, but it's just hard to execute on, and there's really no reason to use this weapon over any of the others most of the time. I mean, the charge shot is cool, I guess. It summons icebergs from the sky, which is nice, but this weapon is not anything to write home about, but it's still not the worst. Cyber Peacock's weapon is getting closer to being the worst, though, just because of how awkward it is to use. You have to stand still, aim, and then shoot a short-range laser. I mean, not only can your buster do the same thing a lot faster and easier and more powerfully, but so can almost every other weapon from this game. Even the charge shot of this weapon isn't very good, so I'm obviously a big-time hater for this weapon. But if that's not the worst, then what is? Well, it's gotta be Double Cyclone. I mean, come on, guys. This weapon is weak, it shoots at an awkward angle in front of you and behind you, and its charge shot seems like it would be good, but it just isn't so. Yeah, I mean, you guys probably saw this coming, but Double Cyclone is easily the worst weapon for Mega Man X in this game. But, is it possible that Zero might have something even worse? Well, it's very unlikely, but let's check it out just to be sure. Most of Zero's techniques are really good to the point where it's honestly hard to find one that isn't good. The downwards ice attack is obviously great and easy to incorporate into your moveset. The upwards fire attack is even better because of how powerful it is along with its comboing ability. Storm Owl gives you Mace Windu's lightsaber by changing its color and straight up upgrading it across the board. Cyber Peacock gives you a Giga Attack that launches a ton of projectiles all over the place. Split Mushroom gives you a double jump and a spin attack. Jet Stingray gives you the ability to dash midair. I mean, come on, none of these are bad and all of them are amazing weapons that are extremely useful. The worst weapon for Zero, in my opinion, comes down to either the Thunder God attack from Web Spider, which is just a straightforward electrical stabbing attack, or the dash attack from Slash Beast. And again, both of these weapons are actually pretty good, it's just which one is the least best. And honestly, at first glance, I'd say the electrical stab might be the worst, but it turns out this thing does a ton of damage, so I can't call it the worst. Meaning Zero's dash attack is the worst of Zero's weapons. Which is hard to say, because this one is also useful and not even weak if we're being honest here, but like, compared to all the other weapons Zero gets, this one is the least useful. I mean, I guess compared to the electrical stab, it's pretty close, but I think this one is just the least best, even though it is still very good, so don't get it twisted. Hopefully you guys down in the comment sections aren't getting too crazy over this pick, because this was a hard choice due to every Zero ability in this game being very good and useful, but I mean, I said what I said, it's 
official, but which is worse? Double Cyclone for Mega Man X or Zero's Dash Attack? <laughs> That's a funny joke, right guys? I mean, obviously Double Cyclone is worse, so congratulations Double Cyclone. You are the worst weapon from Mega Man X4. With the first Legacy Collection out of the way, it's time to move on to the second Mega Man Legacy Collection, obviously. But in the last video on the best weapons, I got a lot of comments theorizing why I left out Axel's weapons in that video. Some people thought it was because I was stupid, some people thought I forgot about them, some people thought I was lazy, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. I tried to play as Axel as little as possible in any of the Mega Man X games he's in, and I didn't even know he had his own weapons, okay? I'll admit it, I thought he just had the same weapons as Mega Man X, so naturally you're probably wondering, hey, are you going to cover Axel's weapons in this video? No, I'm not. I don't have any experience using those weapons and I know nothing about them, so it would not be fair to Axel and his weapons for me to cover them in this video. But, I will cover them whenever I inevitably do a review on Mega Man X7 and Mega Man X8, so if you want to see those videos, comment down below and Axel will get his time in the limelight. But, uh, you have to comment down below and you have to be subscribed. I can see a little icon next to your name if you're subscribed and, uh, if you ask me to review Mega Man X8 and Axel's weapons and you aren't subscribed, I'll specifically not do it. Mega Man X5 was meant to be the final game in the Mega Man X series, but they really didn't go out with a bang in terms of the weapons department. In the best weapons video, I was originally going to make a joke about how Mega Man 5 having bad weapons and Mega Man X5 also having bad weapons is connected somehow, but I couldn't think of a good delivery for it, but my comment section managed to make the same connection, so uh, now it seems like I'm stealing ideas from my comments, but I swear I came up with this idea first, I just didn't know how to make it a joke. Anyway, jokes aside, these weapons are mostly awful. They're there are a few good ones here and there, I guess, but mostly for Zero. Anyway, as always, we're starting with Mega Man X, and let's start with Grizzly Slash's weapon since we already know this one is not going to be the worst. Well, at least we would know that if you watched my best weapons video. You did watch that, right? If not, watch it after this video. Don't, don't click away right now to watch it. That will ruin my watch time and YouTube will get very angry with me. Please, I don't like it. When YouTube gets angry at me, bad things happen. This looks a lot like Quick Boomerang, and honestly, it just is a lot like Quick Boomerang. It's not super powerful, but it is fun to use and you can shoot it super fast so it's not a bad weapon at all. What really makes this weapon the best though is the charge shot being a shield weapon. And I know you guys probably still aren't used to me being so nice to shield weapons but when they're good I'll let you know that they're good. And this one is really good. Not necessarily for protecting you from projectiles and stuff but it's great for dealing a lot of damage quickly as you can see with this gameplay. And yes that is probably why I like this shield weapon since I enjoy attacking more than defending in Mega Man but honestly the Mega Man X shield weapons are just surprisingly good at both things in general, but anyway, this weapon is clearly not the worst. Next up, we have Goo Shaver from Duff McWhalen, which is really just a worse version of Jet Stingray's weapon from earlier. I mean, it's alright, it does go straight to the ground, which is annoying, but again, you can use your buster and weapons at the same time in this game, so it's not as big of a deal as it would be in some of the other games. But it is still pretty weak, so that's not good. Its char shot is better than Jet Stingray's at least because it summons a ton of ice cubes. It's still not anything amazing, but hey, at least it has some improvement over the weapon that it blatantly copied. Obviously, this will not be the worst weapon though. Squid Adler may have one of my least favorite stages of all time for many, many reasons and I'd be willing to bet most of you agree with me on this. Listen, comment section, I know we don't get along and we fight and we bicker and argue all the time, at least my non-subscribers, but can we at least agree that Squid Adler stage is one of the worst of all time? I mean, come on, we gotta find some common ground somewhere. What makes this even worse though is the weapon you get after going through this travesty of a level just isn't good. It looks like it should be good, but it isn't good, which is even worse. It looks almost exactly like a Lechman's weapon from Mega Man 1, which is a powerhouse of a weapon that does a ton of damage and takes out everything in its path. This thing, however, isn't even half the power level of a Lechman's weapon. It's almost disrespectful to compare the two. But I do kind of have to because it's an electrical weapon that shoots up and sideways exactly like a Lechman's weapon. The charge shot, on the other hand, is similar to the charge shot from Spark Mandrel's weapon in Mega Man X1, and this is obviously better than the Lechman looking attack, but it's still not great. Not the worst either, but far from being great. Matrix's weapon is just weird. I'm gonna go ahead and spoil that it's not the worst, but look at this thing. It's just sad to shoot. I mean, it can be useful, I guess, especially since you can use your regular X Buster on top of it, but it's just not good. And his charge shot isn't any better. I mean, maybe I'm just a Mega Man X5 weapon hater, but come on, guys. Do you use this weapon to a good effect? Let me know down in the comments. I'm genuinely curious. And I don't mean for trick shots or anything like that. I mean, like, is there a 
point in this game where you actually think to yourself, oh, it's time I used the ground fire here. Nothing else is as good as this weapon in this scenario. I better use ground fire. Anyway, it's still not the worst, so I'll stop making fun of it. Axel the Red gives you a big old spiky ball, which like isn't bad in terms of its concept and how it is as a weapon, but it doesn't do a lot of damage, which is annoying. You might be thinking I'm spoiled and that I think every weapon should just be overpowered, but no. I think this weapon genuinely should just do more damage for how it looks and for balancing purposes in general. The charge shot does make it stronger and it bounces around the screen, which is cool I guess, but it's still nothing amazing. Is it the absolute worst though? Definitely not. The worst is going to come down to three weapons that are all abhorrent. These weapons are of course Wing Spiral, which is like Top Man's top spin from Mega Man 3, Dark Hold, which is literally Flash Stopper from Mega Man 2, and F Laser, which isn't a laser at all, it's just an RC airplane that you can play around with. Choosing between these three is going to be incredibly difficult, so if I see any comments say, Tutor P, you're so stupid for choosing that weapon as the worst weapon for Mega Man X5. It's obviously one of the other three that you said were terrible. If you say something like that, I'm going to find you in real life and slap you with a fish. Yeah, that's right. Do you remember those old school 2012 YouTube videos where people would get slapped by real life dead fish and, you know, you would just slap people with them? Because I'll do it and I'm not playing around here. Anyway, enough stalling. Despite my better judgment, I'm going to go ahead and say Dark Hold is not the worst weapon. I was tempted to say it was from the beginning, but I mean, there are a few segments where it is useful like the lasers, and I know some people need this weapon for their first times playing Mega Man X5, so it's not fair to call this one the worst. But it's certainly not good. I mean, it has one use, and it's not even needed, which really means it's between the RC plane and the wing spiral attack. Now, the spiral attack, like I said, is a lot like topspin. It's maybe a little bit better since you don't have to be in the air when you use it, and it works as intended, so I gotta give it credit for that. But as a weapon? Come on, it's weak, it puts you in harm's way, and I hate using this thing. The char shot is a little bit better, but even that's not great when compared to the other weapons in this game, which is saying a lot, because these other weapons are so bad. The RC airplane, on the other hand, in this base form is, uh, an RC airplane. Do I need Tizzy to come explain to the folks at home what an RC airplane is? I sure hope not. But anyway, this is too slow to be useful, but it is at least fun. I can at least enjoy this weapon and have a good time. I can't kill enemies with it that well, but I can at least have a smile on my face while using it, which is nice. Plus, the charge version of this weapon has an interesting glitch that actually makes it pretty good, but I'll talk about that in another video. So yeah, you know what that means. The wing spiral is the worst weapon. I mean, come on, look at this thing, guys. Maybe I'm just a hater, but I'm proud to be a hater of this weapon. It is obviously the worst weapon for X, but does Zero have anything worse? Let's find out. Now, Zero has been nerfed a little bit since Mega Man X4, but as usual, at least most of his weapons are useful. Crescent Grizzly gives you a double jump and a spinny attack. Duff McWhalen gives you an icy dash attack that's more useful than you would think. Squid Adler gives you an electrical uppercut, which is obviously good. Izzy Glow gives you a giga attack, basically. Matrix gives you a downwards fire attack, which is obviously useful once again. We love our upwards and downwards attacks. And Axel the Red gives him my favorite weapon for zero, the Shadow Clone weapon. I mean, all of these weapons are just really good and are easy to use in general against both enemies and mini bosses, not to mention actual bosses, meaning none of these are the worst. But there are two weapons I left out. First of all, of course, Dark Hold, which is obviously the time freezing weapon to help people out with the lasers, but also another weapon from the Skyver called the W Shredder. Now, this weapon is just weird. I don't really understand it, so I will say maybe I am just using it wrong, but I don't like this weapon at all. It's like a worse version of the clone you get from Axel the Red in the same game. It shows up after you dash and can damage enemies, but it's weird to aim and overall underwhelming. So it's between this weird thing and Dark Hold. And since Dark Hold is at least useful for the lasers, I am once again going for the Skyver's weapon, W Shredder, as the worst weapon in Mega Man X5 for zero. But which weapon is worse in this whole game? The Skyver's weapon for Mega Man X or the Skyver's weapon for zero? This one actually isn't so obvious because they're both pretty bad, but I've got to say the one for Mega Man X. I mean, both are very bad in all honesty, but at least Zero's is kind of useful. X's version of this literally puts him in harm's way and gives me PTSD of Topspin's awful weapons, so I gotta make it official, guys. Congratulations, the Skyver's weapon for Mega Man X specifically. You are the worst weapon in Mega Man X5!
Mega Man X6 is possibly the most hated Mega Man X game of all time, and if it wasn't for Mega Man X7, it would be the most hated. And while I do understand the hatred, I reject it. I think this game is more fun than you think, especially if you know all the cool strats. But one day I will review this game and give you all of my secrets to make this game a lot more fun. For now though, let's take a look at the weapons, which are actually a big improvement over Mega Man X5, both for X and Zero. First of all, we're starting with Mega Man X of course, and let's begin with Ground Scarbage. And you know what? I have some beef with you guys regarding this Maverick. In my best Mega Man X songs video, I didn't say this guy had the best theme, but I said it was good, because it is. And lots of people were upset about that, which baffles me. This stage has a great track. I'd understand if you had PTSD from the stage design since, you know, this isn't the best stage ever, but the song is good and I refuse to listen to anyone who says otherwise. You know what? I think this would even be a good sample for a rap beat, and you know what? I'll prove it. Anyway, about the actual weapon. Despite being poop, it's not awful. I mean, it's literally poop because Ground Scarvich is a dung beetle, but the weapon really is not that bad. I don't love it, I think it's far from the best, but it's not the worst either. It's just a big old ball of poop which is capable of killing enemies, so it's not the worst. Blaze Henix's flame store thing is also not the worst. It's not great, but I like this weapon a lot. It's fun to use because it's a literal flame sword and it also shoots out fireballs. I mean, this is one of the coolest weapons ever. I guess it could be stronger than it is, but how could I hate on this weapon? It is not the worst. The Yamar option is definitely not the worst either. It's not a shield weapon from this game, but by golly does it do a good job of being a shield weapon, despite not being a shield weapon. It can protect, it can attack, and it can even extend your hitbox to save reploids. Plus, in those later Gates lab stages, it's nice to have when you're just hanging onto a wall for dear life. I don't think anyone did think this was the worst weapon, but just in case you did think that, it's not. Metal Shark Player gives you a literal anchor to shoot out of your buster, which is pretty powerful and not bad at all. It might have a weird path that it follows, but I don't think it's hard to aim. Plus, the charge shot of this releases a ton of metal storm eagles that wipe out all the enemies on your screen, so there's no way this could be the worst weapon. Infinity Majinian gives you a laser. I mean, there's not much to complain about here. It's not the best weapon ever, but it's also not bad at all. And its charge shot summons a ton of giant lasers from the ground, which can be very useful in multiple parts of this game, so it's not going to be the worst weapon either. Now, you would think that shield Sheldon would have the worst weapon for Mega Man X at least, and it's certainly not a great one, but because you're able to use the same exploits as Zero if you're using the Shadow Armor, I can't make myself call it the worst. I'll show some gameplay of Zero doing it, but you are able to do this exact exploit with the Shadow Armor X specifically. It's still not the best because it's a pain to set up getting the Shadow Armor and everything, and it's not as easy to do as it is with Zero, but I cannot call it the worst because it is clearly useful. This means the worst for Mega Man X is between Ice Burst or Meteor rain from Blizzard Woofing and Rainy Turtleoid respectively. Now this is a classic battle, water versus ice. Neither one of these weapons are great, but they're both better than a lot of the Mega Man X5 weapons at the very least. I'd say Blizzard Woofing's ice weapon is probably worse when it comes to killing enemies, but you are able to jump on top of the ice that you shoot out, which can be useful. Whereas the Meteor Rain water balloon things are better for killing enemies, but you can't stand on your shots because, uh, well, because it's not ice. So which is better here, enemy killing or usefulness in general. Normally, I would go for the usefulness, but I don't think standing on this small ice block is useful enough to make up for its shortcomings, so unfortunately, Blizzard Wolfing's weapon is the worst weapon for Mega Man X from Mega Man X6. But, we still don't know if it's the worst in the game overall, because we still have Zero's weapons to peruse. I'll go ahead and let you know, it's gonna be hard to find a bad weapon though, because basically all of these are really good and decent at the very worst. Obviously, the Insui Zone where you become literally invincible is not the worst, because, well, there is an invincibility 
invincibility glitch. Shield Sheldon's weapon cannot be the worst either because of the damage glitch that lets you destroy anything without iframes in one hit. Zero also has the Yamar option, which is still just as great as ever, if not even better for Zero since he can use it alongside his other weapons. Zero also has a Giga attack, obviously not the worst. Zero has the return of the downward sword attack from Metal Shark player. This is great, not the worst. Zero can jump onto the ceiling or to the top of the screen if there is no ceiling with Blizzard Wolfang's weapon, which is very cool. I mean, maybe that's not super useful, but it's fun and cool at the very least, so I refuse to call it Zero's worst weapon. Blaze Henix gives you a weird flame uppercut thing. It's not as useful as Zero's usual uppercut attacks, but it's obviously not bad at all, and it's not going to be the worst, which only leaves the dash attack you get from Ground Scarvage. This is still a good weapon. I mean, it's very useful and good for killing enemies, but the only problem it has is that it's very awkward to use. Actually, activating this attack is harder than you think it would be, and you go down at a weird angle after using it. Again, it is not bad in the slightest, but I would say it's Zero's least best weapon, which is a phrase you're probably sick of hearing if you watched my last video on the worst song from every Mega Man X game, but I mean, come on guys, it's, it's the best way to describe this. I don't want to call it the worst. But anyway, this is Zero's worst weapon only by default. But which is worse? Zero's dash attack or X's what? Yeah, okay, it's X's weapon. I'm not even going to add any suspense. Congratulations, X's version of Blizzard Wolfang's weapon. You are the worst weapon from Mega Man X6. Mega Man X7 is probably the most hated Mega Man X game ever made, but this one is for good reason. I do still enjoy this game in general, but when compared to every other Mega Man X game ever made, it is obviously the worst. And yes, I am including Mega Man X Command Mission X when I say that. It's a better game. What do you want from me? Anyway, it's time to find the worst weapon from this game, and as always, we're gonna start with Mega Man X. I'd say pretty much all the weapons for X are bad, but let's begin with Volt Tornado. This weapon is the only weapon that is not completely cheeks. I mean, it's still not great, but it at least kills enemies and feels like a weapon that should be in a Mega Man X game, which I have to appreciate by law. So this one cannot be the worst. Splash Laser also isn't that bad, I guess. It's a little bit weird since it's just water, but it can actually do a good amount of damage, especially when you charge it up and shoot more water. I guess this does make sense though, because Mega Man X is fighting robots, and we all know robots are deathly allergic to water. So this can't be the worst. Flame Hyenart's weapon is not that bad, I suppose, but I certainly do not like it. It's like a fire shot that turns into a bomb and explodes, which is weird, but I mean, it can kill enemies. The charged up shot just shoots a more powerful version too, which is nice, so I'm not going to be calling this the worst weapon. Wind Cutter from Wind Crow Wing isn't that bad. I actually enjoy using this weapon, but I just wish it was stronger. Like, I don't know what all to say about this weapon because it's pretty basic and self-explanatory, and I don't just want to talk bad about it since I do enjoy using this weapon, but at the same time, it's not good. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Me? Lie to you guys? Come on, that would never happen. Happen. Anyway, this is not the worst weapon. Let's just move on. Snipe Anteater gives you one of the most pathetic missiles in all of video gaming history, and it's still not the worst weapon. I'm not even going to waste your time talking about this weapon since it's just boring and weak, but it's still somehow not the worst. Vanishing Gungaroo probably has the weirdest weapon from this game, being a straight up explosion without a bomb. This is weird already just in concept, but also, Flame Hyena does the same thing but better, so like, why is this a weapon? This weapon may be stronger than Flame Hyena's. I honestly don't know because I can't be asked to do the research on the nitty gritty in Mega Man X7, but either way, this is not the worst weapon, it's just very weird. This means Mega Man X's worst weapon is between the Gaia Shield and the Moving Wheel, and as much as I hate shield weapons, I think I'm gonna have to give it to Moving Wheel for being the worst. I mean, don't get me wrong, the Gaia Shield sucks. I would love to call this the worst weapon from this game, but at least the Char Shot has a pretty effective ability of summoning a giant rock that splits into two. It's still not as strong as it should be considering what it is, but I mean, it's not the worst weapon. Moving wheel, on the other hand, is just, uh, a moving wheel. And the charge shot, get this, is three moving wheels. This is horrible. If you haven't played this game, you might think it's actually good because it looks like Wheel Gator's weapon, but trust me, this weapon is complete cheeks compared to Wheel Gator's weapon. It's honestly disrespectful to compare the two. So yeah, you probably could have guessed it just from the name being moving wheel, but, uh, moving wheel is the worst weapon for Mega Man X. But what about Zero. I mean, we aren't looking at Axel like I said, but Zero has some weapons, right? Yep, he indeed does, viewer. Good question. He does have weapons, and they are a lot worse than every other game so far, so let's just get right into it. First of all, Zero also has the moving wheel for some reason. It's still awful, but I'm gonna go ahead and let you know it is not his worst weapon, which is shocking, I know. At least this one isn't called moving wheel. It's called slicing light wheel, which is a much cooler name. Plus, it just looks a lot cooler, but anyway, it's bad, but not the worst. 
first. Tornado Tunyon gives Zero a giant tornado, and this weapon is actually pretty good relative to his other weapons. It's not great, but this obviously is not going to be the worst. I mean, come on, guys. Flame Hyenard gives you a giga attack, which is always useful, so this can't be the worst. Splash Warfly gives you a weird spear and a long range stabbing attack, which is okay, I guess, but not great. Not the worst, but not great. Wind Crow Rain gives Zero another weird weapon, and it also allows him to shoot one of the weakest projectiles in the entire Mega Man franchise. But believe it or not, it's still not the worst. Vanishing Gungaroo gives Zero a much better projectile, but that isn't saying much since the other one is the worst of all time. This weapon is actually good relative to the other Zero weapons from Mega Man X7 though, so it's not going to be the worst. Snipe Anteater gives Zero a missile, which he did not need, but it is at least another projectile. Actually, I don't know why I said at least. None of these have been great, but this is still not the worst. Now I know what you're probably thinking. Hey, these weapons are so bad. What could possibly be Zero's worst weapon? Well, that honor would have to go to Soldier Stone Kong's counter move. Now, I'll be honest, I just don't understand this weapon and I can barely get it to work most of the time. I have gotten it to work before, so I know what it does, but it's just bad. If you're gonna give Zero a counter, it should be like a Smash Bros counter and not like this, whatever this is. I hate this weapon though, I don't think Zero even needed a counter, but whatever. This is obviously Zero's worst weapon. But which is worse? Zero's counter or Mega Man X's moving wheel? Well, honestly, this is tough. These are two of the worst weapons ever made from any Mega Man game ever. A Again, I could just be using the counter wrong, so maybe there's a better way to use it, but I'm surprisingly gonna have to give this one to Zero's counter. Moving wheel is still awful, but I mean, at least you can use it against enemies consistently. Yeah, the bar is really low for this game, but that's Mega Man X7 for you. So congratulations, Zero's counter. You are the worst weapon from Mega Man X7. Mega Man X8 isn't really given much of a chance by many people due to how awful Mega Man X7 was, but I will say this game is much better than Mega Man X7, weapons included. It is far from my favorite Mega Man X game ever, I mean compared to the others it's actually on the bottom half of my favorite Mega Man X games, but it is easily better than Mega Man X7 at the very least. Also like I said, apparently Axel has his own weapons in this game. I don't know how I didn't know that, but I'm not going over him. I don't have the footage for it nor the knowledge to properly rank them. I will one day review all of the Mega Man X games though, and once I get to Mega Man X8, I'll bring this up and talk about his best and worst weapons just for you guys. Just please don't let me forget. If you've made it this far in the video, leave a comment telling me to review Mega Man X8 and not to forget about Axel. You can also comment other stuff too, of course, but just also comment that, please. I don't want to forget and look like an ignoramus. Anyway, as always, we're starting with Mega Man X's weapons, and let's begin with Dark Mantis's weapon. This is my favorite weapon from this game, even though I don't think it's the best one, but it's just so fun to use and it looks really cool so can you blame me well i guess you could but please don't i just like this weapon a lot so i am not calling it the worst avalanche yeti's weapon also is not the worst i mean this weapon is just straight up really good it's easy to use has good range and freezes enemies that it doesn't kill so this weapon is great obviously it's not the worst gravity and tunyon's weapon is also great like i said in the best weapons video this is what gravity beetle's weapon should have been it may not be the best weapon ever but i like this one a lot it's fun to use it's powerful and it looks really cool so it meets all my criteria for a good weapon, making it automatically not the worst weapon. Gigabolt Mana Wars weapon is alright, I mean it's pretty fun and it's certainly not bad but it is not the best. But this video is on the worst weapons, which clearly this isn't because I said it's not bad, remember? Remember when I said it's not bad? That means it's also probably not the worst. Burn Rooster's weapon is kind of in the same boat, I mean it can kill enemies pretty well but it's literally the Flame Mammoth Charge Shot from Mega Man X1 which already wasn't that great. I will say though this is an improvement because of its longer range, seems to do more damage, and you don't have to charge it up to get the same effect. Charging it does shoot an extra one behind you in case you need to shoot behind you for whatever reason, but this still is not the worst. Earthrock Trilobite gives you a very weird weapon because you make a crystal grow from the ground which can be used as a shield and then knocked over to be used as a weapon. What really makes this weapon nice though is the fact that the charge shot guarantees that there is an item inside like a health drop or a weapon drop or something like that. So if you want a free drop, you can use this weapon's charge shot meaning it is definitely not the worst. This means Mega Man X's worst weapon is between Bamboo Pandemonium's missile and Optic Sunflower's fireworks. This is a real predicament though because they're both bad in a completely different way. I mean they're both weak but one weapon is really easy to shoot and the other one is incredibly hard to aim. Optic Sunflower's fireworks are very pretty and I love them because I love pretty things but it's hard to actually get good use out of this. But Bamboo Pandemonium's weapon is boring and generic and a missile that's just too weak. So you might think 
I'd pick that as the worst, but you know what? The fact that the charge shots has Mega Man X literally calling in an airstrike is hilarious, and that alone is going to save this weapon from being the worst. Meaning, yes, X's worst weapon is Optic Sunflowers, which does hurt me to say for some reason. I have a very strange feeling that the comment section is going to get really mad at me for this, but again, this is my video. Please make your own, and I might like and subscribe to your channel. But of course, since we're skipping Axel, it's time to look at Zero's weapons. Zero's weapons are certainly better than they were in Mega Man X7, but they're still a far cry from what they once were in Mega Man X4, X5, and X6. But honestly, he was kind of overpowered in those games, so maybe that's for the best. But first of all, we have Optic Sunflower's weapon, which literally just lets Zero summon a beam of light from the heavens that kills any and every enemy it comes into contact with. Obviously, this is not the worst weapon. Burn Rooster gives Zero the classic downwards midair attack that we all know and love, not the worst weapon. Avalanche Yeti gives Zero the upwards attack that we all know and love, and it's great to see these two return, and they are obviously never going to be the worst. They're too fun to use, they're too useful, and they're great. Earthrock Trilobite straight up upgrades Zero Z Saber and lets it reflect projectiles, which is just objectively better, so this cannot be the worst. Bamboo Pandemonium gives Zero a dash attack that looks like X's original halfway charge shot from Mega Man X1, and I just like this weapon a lot. But even if I didn't like this weapon, it's still not the worst. Gigabolt Man o War gives Zero a move that lets him teleport behind his enemies, which kills them. Obviously, no weapon like that could ever be the worst. Dark Mantis gives Zero my favorite weapon once again, which allows him to spin around in the air over and over. But he does also attack out of this, which is great and does a lot of damage, so this is one of the better weapons actually, meaning of course, it is not the worst. But what is the worst? Well, it's Gravity and Tunyon's weapon. I mean, this weapon isn't bad, if we're being honest. It's just the least best once again. And the reason I don't like this weapon is because it has to wind up the same way a cartoon character winds up his punch, and that just doesn't fit my playstyle. I like playing fast. And I did say this exact same thing in the best weapons video in case you're getting deja vu right now. Relax, I did say the same thing. You're not crazy. But it's true. This weapon is very powerful and definitely not bad. It's just my least favorite by far and the hardest for me to use. But is this weapon really worse than Mega Man X's version of Optic Sunflower's weapon? No. Of course not, it's, it's way better. Zero's Gravity and Tunya weapon is at least a pretty good attack, whereas X's Optic Sunflower weapon is just very hard to aim. And that weapon is not garbage or anything for the record. I actually don't think any weapon from Mega Man X8 is straight up garbage, but I do think it is official that Mega Man X's Optic Sunflower weapon is the worst weapon from Mega Man X8. Those were the worst weapons from every Mega Man X game, X through X8. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video because it was a long time coming, obviously, so hopefully it was worth the wait, but if it wasn't worth the wait, uh, well, I can't really do much about that now, but the only thing you can do is subscribe, and maybe one of my future videos will make it worth the wait. So, really what that means is, whether or not you actually enjoyed this video, you should subscribe, because if you liked it, you should subscribe to see whatever I upload next, and if you didn't like it, you should subscribe and let me redeem myself with a future video. So yeah, uh, you do have to subscribe either way.